is the government yeah. doing to improve the infrastructures? And yeah. I'm asking to the private sector to, to get their view. Yeah, when, you, when you ask what are the bots you find, and I tell you because I, I, uh, yes. I have to face it also. Yeah, yeah. Uh, many times is uh, the local size. Okay, we're 6.7, almost 7 million. Okay, uh, obviously, uh, when you look at certain businesses, uh, you cannot think of only Paraguay. You have to link, think about going outside. That's where the part of the landlocking becomes an issue. But as, as Jorge says, that's where is very critical infrastructure. Okay, and the connectivity. If we can develop that which will ensure, you know, the coming and the going, the cheaper coming and the going mm -hmm. of our goods and services, then you're really setting up a base that will attract even more investors. Exactly. Okay. And that is what is very critical for us in that sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, the, because, uh, uh, as Connor said, I mean, when you look at the country in terms of uh, agricultural productivity, you're sitting on, on the two largest uh, water reservoirs in the world, you know, one share with uh, Brazil. Uh, the productivity of the land in Paraguay is incredible. The so how is it compared to some uh, neighboring countries? Well, Ar Argentina is good. <clears throat> what happens in Paraguay is 95% of the mechanical agriculture is under the no-tilling system, which is environmentally friendly also, yeah. and preserves the, uh, the land. You know, so that, that will ensure that's why you add 100,000 hectares here, and the productivity is almost there insured. 2.8 uh, uh, tons yield in, in, in soybeans, and soybeans of extremely good quality. I'm a crusher. I'm an oilseed crusher. My fellow crushers, uh, friends in, in Argentina, in order to increase the protein content of their soybean meal, or, or the of the protein of, of their oil, they need to buy, they need to bring Paraguayan soybeans, okay? I know it's a matter of which seed you use, etc. but it also has to do with what you're producing and the method with which you're producing. But again, obviously our local consumption is limited, although mm -hmm. has space to develop, but you have to look in terms of outside when you get into certain kind of businesses. And that's where connectivity is critical for us. So obviously, I think we're all uh, obviously sure that in infrastructure is critical for the sustainable growth. And that's that's it. And the point about uh, you know, the, let's say the 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 environmental responsibility that you know he, he has been mentioning in terms of that you know that we don't plow up the whole country every every six months. It, Paraguay slowly but surely is turning this into money. I mean, this country is now the largest exporter in the world of organic sugar. Mm -hmm. the, the beef from Paraguay, uh, you know, I, I laugh when I look at the, you know, uh, natural label that they use in Europe, you know, because the consumer thinks it means organic. Um, here in this country, Every cow gets at least two acres, and he wanders around that two acres. <laughs> and has a little nibble here, and he has a nibble there. Then he wanders over for a drink. But my point is that uh, Paraguay is slowly but surely taking advantage, competitive advantage, and there is real long-term competitive advantage mm -hmm. in having, let's say, a higher level of environmental sensitivity to your agro-industrial activity. Mm -hmm. And as, as Agustin pointed out, and you know, uh, the same is true with wheat. I mean, Brazil is exporting its wheat to buy it from Paraguay to eat. Um, and there's a reason. It's not that they love Paraguayans, it's, it's better wheat. Another good news, especially for foreign investor, is that we are living uh, something like a cultural shift in our society, especially because the new generation of business leader starting to take charge of the new ventures. Because after all, you can have stability, good condition, you, you can have good macroeconomic indicators, you can have land, clean energy, water, but you also need people who want to, to make uh, new ventures. After all, how World Trade Center, which is coming here, 
it's coming to Paraguay. It's because some people go to them and convince them to come to Paraguay and offer them the country, explain them all the advantage. You need this kind of people, this kind of new generation of business leader. And we are starting to see that in Paraguay. The post-dictatorship uh, uh, generation, you can say. People who grow in a more free environment. And now we can see that in the tourist sector also, in yeah. the tourism sector, in the construction sector in general, also in the agribusiness sector, because we have to go abroad and offer those opportunities. Yes, course, and this is a very good news also. We are living that cultural shift. And of course we shouldn't uh, forget that Paraguay is only a recent democracy, so the, mm -hmm. the, this is all years, also yeah. part of well, jump, jump, Jumping on that, you know, look at Chile, look at Spain. Both of these countries have been dictatorships recently. It takes some time to mm -hmm. get the dictatorship mentality yep. out of your blood. Yeah. There's a very key number, yep. uh, you know, I sit on top of a bank, um, aside from the fact that we see most investors and investments that pass through town, we also have our public to look after. So it's very important to know who is your public. And uh, the last time that we were, were looking at our own business, and we said, give me a profile of the typical client in this bank and give me the profile of the typical Paraguayan. And if you want to give a profile of the typical Paraguayan, the first two data points are he or she has 23 years of age and there's an 85% possibility they have a mobile phone. That's the starting point. Now, magically, that 23 years is almost, the, you know, bar one year in the number of years that we have left dictatorship behind in this country. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing the first generation mm -hmm. who don't know the name of the dictator and don't care. Mm -hmm. They don't care. Uh, we have they, have, they are a new generation, a completely new generation with no emotional baggage. Yes. So clearly one, one of the main um, um, challenges that probably Paraguay has to face is uh, getting up the, um, the index that tracks um, the transparency and corruption of countries. Uh, and the moment it doesn't sit in a, in a really good position. I, I know you have strong views about this. I have this. very strong views it is, it is, though, an issue, and, and I'm sure that um, all of you, when you talk to investors, you might be asked about this. Yes. It's, it's a yeah. good thing that they talk about that, because uh, it's not what we say. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a civil servant. But talk to, the, to the, 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 the people who came to Paraguay in the last 10 or 15 years. Silvia, I've been here 12 years. I work, this is my sixth country. I've been 29 years with this company working all over Latin America. I don't think that the, in the terms of transparency and corruption, I don't see it to be very different from many other Latin American countries. Uh, probably, uh, if you could ask me personally, I would ask for a little bit more of uh, legal assurance, okay? That's basically it. But in terms of corruption, I mean, it happens all over the place. So legal assurance that uh, disputes can be settled in the courts and yeah, the result exactly. finally and, and within a, a, a decent Within a reasonable time. period of time, etc., yeah. etc. Are, are things uh, changing towards that direction? I, are you seeing some improvements over the years? I think because of what Ian is saying, because what we're saying, these are new generations. Paraguayans are demanding different issues from what they used to demand 10 years ago or 20 mm -hmm. years ago. So I think they will force the change. That's the way I see it. They okay. will force the change. Yeah. They don't put up what, with what they were putting 20, uh, with 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. That I can tell you for sure. I think one has to be very careful with these uh, indexes of uh, mm -hmm. transparency and corruption because they are based on perceptions. So if you look at this index and then you look how the economy is performing, I mean, this doesn't match. It wouldn't happen if, if, we, if you put the two together. So one has to be very careful on how you interpret these numbers. It's uh, more access, the, there's the internet, there's Twitter, the um, social uh, nets, and it's, it, there is more ways to um, express what people think what's happening. So one has to be very careful with that. Um, and I don't think um, that uh, these numbers on the, on the, uh, on the economy uh, um, um, you know, go in pair with uh, the, the index on transparency and corruption. And a little bit going back to what's, um, what we are uh, saying here about uh, Paraguay, um, at the bank we are 
experiencing a lot of demand for knowledge for, about Paraguay. We keep uh, receiving emails, uh, mm -hmm. we get in, uh, queries in our in, in, intranet and our homepage about what is Paraguay about. <laughs>